prayed every night that he would escape. Who the hell did you do that for? So I can kill him. Happy Halloween! Michael Myers is back to like cut people open and walk really slow and wear a cool mask. The new Halloween movie is in theaters and we've seen it and we have so many spoilery thoughts. First, subscribe to GameSpot Universe where you're gonna get more breakdowns, reviews, and all kinds of good coverage of the movies and TV shows that you love. This is your final warning. We are gonna talk about spoilers for this movie. So if you haven't seen it, go away now. Or unless you don't care, then keep watching. So Chris, you are the, the resident Halloween expert here. Um, did you like this movie? Uh, I love this movie. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. it. This was honestly the most nervous I've been walking into a theater in a very long time. Because you were worried that it was going to be bad? Listen, I live through H2O. I live through <laughs> Halloween Resurrection starring Busta Rhymes. and Tyra Banks. Oh. Like, there were lean times to be a Halloween fan, a Michael Myers fan. I would so. say most times have been a lean time to be a Michael Myers fan. <laughs> Everything after number but not four is this really time. difficult. But no. This time is a good time oh, to be a Michael Myers it's fan. It's great. And what's it's more, really good. it's a good time to be a Jamie Lee Curtis fan. Oh, holy man. Cow. The, the timeline for the Halloween franchise is awful because Lori's had several different children. Her and Michael were, were revealed to be brother and sister in Halloween part two, which is dumb. That's always seemed like the worst, yeah. the worst thing to me. Well, because it, it takes away what makes Michael Myers special is that he, his, his killing, at least in the beginning, is randomness. Right. Like, that's what was so scary about he's the first a, he's Halloween. He's a force of chaos. Yes. And I would say that this movie returns to that. And they, it's, <laughs> it, but it's very, it's, it's not an accident. Like, it's very self aware about it. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite, there's, there's lots of little in jokes and Easter eggs that we'll get into. But mm -hmm. my favorite one is at one point, um, some of the characters are, characters are talking about Michael Myers because in this, in, in Haddonfield, in this, um, this, movie's version of the universe, it's this famous event that, you know, that happened 40 years ago. The babysitter murders, Laurie Strode is is this well-known figure around town who's kind of been, uh, you know, made into this legend in people's right. minds. Um, and and one of the things that, that some of the characters talk about is, oh, was it, were, uh, weren't they, weren't they brother sister? and sister? And then somebody else goes, oh no, that was just, you know, that's just rumor that somebody came up with yeah. to, to, you know, that's not, that, that's not true. That's just a fan theory, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Wasn't it her brother who murdered all those babysitters? No, it was not her brother. That's something that people made up. You read about it's, that on Reddit, didn't you? It's very good about acknowledging things like that in a way that feels natural. It's a little wink. It doesn't take away from the flow of the movie at all, and it, it just keeps it go. It moves right past it, but it gets a little chuckle out of, well, out of fans like us. And it's also like it's telling you flat out like those didn't happen. Yeah. Like as much as we knew those weren't going to be those sequels weren't going to be included because they've been very open about it throughout the production of this film. Putting that in the movie is perfect for someone who knows Halloween but doesn't follow like reports online. Like, none of that's real. Yeah. We're disregarding all of it. We're going back to the original. Back to the basics. Yes. Okay, so let's get it. So, so yes. what is what is one thing that that you really liked about this movie? Um, one of my favorite things about this movie, because obviously, as, if you haven't seen it, like it picks up forty years after the original, and now Jamie Lee Curtis is a seventy-eight. 18. He got me this shirt. It's 40 from years. The, from the junket. That's right. Because so. I care. Thanks. And Michael is scary as f in this movie. <laughs> he is a gigantic <laughs> murdering brute. He's a force of nature, which is how it should be. Um, the body count in this movie is crazy, especially compared to the original where he killed, you know, a handful of people. He kills 14. Yeah, he counted. He murdered, like, like we were watching, we were watching and, the, uh, <laughs> and I leave over and I could be like, 11. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's shocking, and they all go in, like, really horrific ways. Yeah. The, uh, oh, it's so messed up. There's a lot of, like, let, we'll talk about specific kills later, but yeah. just, like, the way that, that Michael is, um, shot the way he he moves it was two different actors it was the original actor and then yes. they got they, they had a different actor playing him at, at some point so there's not really a distinction made in the movie you can't tell obviously but I, but I love the fact that the, the what they got the original actor to play were these scenes where we sort of see Michael without his mask we never see him really clearly 
But yeah, like, it doesn't those, show his face, which I was I was relieved. Yes, about. but those shots are Nick Castle, the original actor who played the shape in right. the first Halloween. So there, there's shots, cool. you know, from the back of his head. You kind of see the side. You never get a full, clear no. picture of his face because that would take the. He's just a dude. Obviously, we just saw him. That's, he's yes. just a man, so that would be boring. But like seeing his face would like the idea is that Michael is sort of evil personified. He's chaos and evil in a human form. And to put just a normal human face that isn't a really ugly William Shatner mask on that would be bad. It's a William Shatner mask? It's a William Shatner mask. <laughs> we also have to talk about A, the, the music, but also just the visual aesthetic of this film because it is so perfectly in line with the original Halloween film. I love that they didn't work, try really hard to like sneak in a cool pop rock song. When a or like update it with like like, Can you? like credits that fly at your face. No, yeah, it, it looks uh, it looks a lot like the original. Like yeah. they, they did a, a, a decent, and it's kind of timeless. Like it, it has a little bit of a 1970s vibe to it. And, and I like when the logo comes up, Halloween, it's like such a, it's such a like, whoa, yes. And uh, the, the opening credits play and it's, it's a, a, the pumpkin. <laughs> it's a rotted pumpkin. Coming but back like, to life. Coming back to life. In reverse time lapse. Oh, it's time so, lapse. it's so perfect. It's really good. And it also made me think because uh, uh, David Gordon Green, who directed this movie, and uh, he and Danny McBride co-wrote it. Yes. And obviously they're responsible for Eastbound and Down, the HBO show, which every episode of Eastbound and Down has like a really good <laughs> moment yeah. where like, uh, like Kenny Powers like does something shitty, like on a jet lets ski. people off on it. It's jet ski, and then the logo. <laughs> Eastbound and Down comes up. And they know it, how it, to craft an opening credit sequence. Yeah, they know. Really they well. understand the importance of that moment as like a just like a <laughs> bump. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the music specifically, I mean, you can't. Halloween isn't Halloween without John Carpenter involved, and not only was he involved, sort of helping with the writing and all and that, consulting and consulting. He did the score, which is a mix of new music and music from the original. And they, it all sounds like it's from the same thing. It's so good. <laughs> it's really good. It's so good. I want to talk about the cast, yes. um, and we'll get to Jamie Lee Curtis, but um, I really liked the teenagers in the cast. All the actors who played the teenagers, mm -hmm. including uh, Andy Matichak as Allison, Allison, who is uh, Laurie Strode's granddaughter. Mm -hmm. um, Judy Greer was fantastic as Laurie Strode's kind of estranged-ish yeah. daughter, who had a weird childhood growing up with, uh, with Laurie Strode and being trained how to shoot guns at eight years old and how to, you know, how to defend herself in this fortress of a house that her mother has built. And they have a weird history, but uh, specifically the teenagers in this movie felt like teenagers. Yeah. I mean, they felt like realistic teenagers who weren't cur uh, caricatures and were they acted in realistic ways and they were kind of shitty but kind of relatable in other ways and I felt bad when they got brutally stabbed to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we get a lot of we get a lot of movies that feature teenage characters where they have the weight of the world on their shoulders, man, and like they have to solve the problem. Like these teenagers were concerned with like getting wasted, making out, mm -hmm. like going to the dance, like shit teenagers care about. But like they were also like good babysitters, and yeah. they were nice to their grandmas. Like they Allison were... was in the National Honor Society and loved her grandmother. Mm -hmm. Like they were, that's her character. They were well-rounded, uh, surprisingly well-fleshed out character. Even like her little friend who got killed and. Mm. The other, it, yeah, it, okay, but Jamie Lee Curtis, though. Yes, let's be honest, we're all here for Jamie Lee. <laughs> she's so good. It, she's exactly what you would want Laurie Strode to go up to be, just a badass killing machine who has, let's be honest, has a lot of PTSD problems, like a lot of stuff going on with her that has really kind of informed her life. It was interesting, uh, I spoke when I spoke with Jamie at the junket, mm -hmm. she said in her mind, uh, trauma, therapy and things of that nature weren't really a thing in the late 70s. So for That's her, fair, yeah. in her brain, Lori went to school the next day hmm. because that was just what happened. She went to school and suddenly she wasn't Lori Strode, the promising student who's gonna go on to be something great from college. She was Lori Strode, the survivor of the babysitter murders. Yeah, the, the, she's Lori Strode who is up for yeah. the rest of her life. 
Um, and But I also like that it didn't deal with, it, it didn't depict um, PTSD as this like, you know, debilitating condition that, mm. that ruined her entire life. Like she clearly, you know, had a family. Um, she took precautions and, and learned how to defend herself. Yes. Like it affected her, uh, but in some negative and some positive ways. Like right. it, it, it felt, didn't it stop felt, her life at all. Right. It felt really, it felt realistic. And it felt like she's such a strong character that whereas maybe this experience would cause some people to break down entirely, mm -hmm. she was able to to move on and grow from it, even though it did affect her in, in negative ways. Um, and Jamie Lee Curtis was just phenomenal in this in this like she's she was so perfectly captured and encapsulated everything and she was vulnerable in in some moments when she was scared for her family and she was hyper badass at other times well i feel like the thing that so it's so easy to forget is that like jamie lee curtis is an amazing actress mm -hmm. it's not something we, have to, we get to see very often i think her most recent tv thing was scream queens which the whole thing about Scream Queens is the entire show was a joke. So yeah. there's not really a chance to put on any A-grade acting, but like Jamie Lee Curtis can act when you're get when you give him like an, an incredible role and she really showed up to play with this one because yeah. she took it on so well. It's so cool. Yeah. It's just really cool to see it was, her. Oh, it, and after it's yes. Literally 40 years. And it, and it's great because it's her versus Michael again. Which is something I honestly never thought I'd see. No, after. who would ever think like no. forty years? If you forty years later, we're gonna do another Halloween movie and it's gonna be the same two characters. What? Well, especially and played by the same actors. Well, especially because after Halloween Resurrection starring Buster Rhymes, <laughs> uh, they literally ki finally killed her. You have to say and, starring Buster Rhymes yes, every time. Yes, you it's say. actually if you look it up on IMDb, it says <laughs> Halloween Resurrection starring Buster Rhymes. I don't think that's true. It's probably true. Let's change it right now and make it true. <laughs> But yeah, she was her character was killed off, but that also killed the franchise. So it's good that she's back. So back rewind yeah, a little rewind, bit. Rewind, get rid of all that nonsense. And now here we are. Yes. Was there anything about this movie that you did not like? It was really hard for me to think of something I didn't enjoy because I loved it so much. Like I like we were giggling throughout the movie. Just like, look what's happening. Um, this is really exciting when you're watching it. Like I, almost every scene is like, oh, I can't, what? I can't believe uh, they're doing this. There's a there's a couple of characters that are in, introduced in the movie that you kind of think are gonna play a not a big role, but like a, a somewhat decent sized role that then just completely disappear. Hmm. Uh, the cursing kid, for one, who is a genius. Uh, yeah. He's he's in that scene well, also, and then he I, runs away. I assume he lived. Maybe? I mean, Michael Myers straight up murders yeah. a kid. Michael Myers snapped a child's camera neck. In this movie, so like if they were gonna kill that kid, presumably they would have just shown like a knife coming through his neck or something. Yeah. And then uh, the shitty boyfriend who, yeah, like I was like, oh, I leaned over. You're like, oh, he dead. Oh, like the first time we meet him, I was <laughs> yeah. like, he's gonna die. Yeah, and then but Which then I guess did... it makes the movie a little bit unpredictable that right. some characters that we thought would die lived and vice versa. And listen, it gives him more shit to kill in the next movie. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, I hope that in 40 years, it's <laughs> Michael Myers. Oh hunts my god, down it can't be another 40 Allison years. Strode's What's wrong with you, shitty boyfriend? Um, Allison Strode's granddaughter's boyfriend. <laughs> no, Allison Strode is a granddaughter, motherfucker. Yeah, but in 40 years, she'll be the grandmother. One thing that bothered me a little bit when I was watching it is actually the thing that I think bothers a lot of people in a lot of horror movies, mm -hmm. especially slashers, which is that so many characters just act so goddamn stupid. Like People do really dumb things Jesus. when someone's coming at them with a knife. Jesus, is what I've but heard. like... When the sheriff finds out that Michael Myers is loose on Halloween, mm -hmm. his movie is literally just Jaws. Like, have you not seen Jaws? When the shark is loose, close the fucking beach. And the other guy goes, what are you gonna do? Cancel Halloween? Fucking yes. <laughs> Cancel, ha you know what's gonna happen. It would have been so easy. Died. It would have been so easy to be like, don't send your kids outside, please. Right, and that's that's on a, uh, or just be on the lookout for an eight foot tall monster who in a William who, Shatner mask. Who carries a knife like this. Like it's not, he's no. not hiding the fact that he's a murderer. Right. He bumps into kids when he has the knife in his hand. Dripping blood and people are like, mm, great costume. Okay, fine. <laughs> but then on a micro level too, individuals just mm. act really stupid. Like when her boyfriend puts 
her phone in, in the tapioca? pudding. Yeah. And pick it up. Shake it off. See if it still works. Yeah, it's pudding. It's not. Phones it's not like, getting into your phone. Right, like if and, it was and, a bowl of punch. Are like okay. Liquid resistant now. Like. Or at least take it home, put it in a bag of rice. You know yeah. what I mean? Everybody knows this trick. Okay, it's 2018. It's not 1970 anymore. Uh, when people did not know how to take care of their cell phones. Because they no, didn't I'm just have... kidding. But like, like for the insurance or whatever, you would need. You, no one would just leave their phone. And go, I'm, I'm over it, and just walk away. That's not realistic. Her dad, when they know, like at the end of the movie, when mm -hmm. they know. They know he's loose. They know he's coming for them. Mm -hmm. Her dad walks outside and just goes, there, hello, is, is there, there any murderers here? here who would like to sneak up behind me and kill my ass? And the answer is yes. And you f***ing deserved it because you're a dumbass. Yeah. He was also kind of a dick. That stuff is also kind of enjoyable yeah. too, though. Well, that's, and it wouldn't that's be a, the thing. Would, would, it be a, would it be a slasher? Would it be a Halloween movie? No. Without some people acting dumb? and getting killed hard by... That's the hallmark of the slasher film. Stupid people getting killed for being stupid. <sighs> All right, let's get into some very, very specific spoilers because there are there's just so much going on in this movie. So I mean, many good, good deaths. Oh. Just really just the best murders. Did you have a favorite? Oh, sh um, I mean, maybe the knife going through the neck as she's looking out the window. Oh. oh. Just right, just like from the... Bash! They should. That's that's the clip mm. they showed us at Comic Con. I know, and you described and like, it to me at Comic Con. Oh, and I was like, it was wow, that sounds so cool. messed up. And then I watched it. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. That's a good like, one. Like you see it come through the front of her neck. It's so gross. Uh, oh, I, and the okay. Oh. Can I get one more? Yes. The fucking das boot. <laughs> oh. Say something, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you. He lets his feet do the talking. <laughs> uh, I'm a big fan of, I don't know how he did it. I, don't, I have no idea how he pulled this off. But when Michael killed one of the, killed the two cops at Lori's house, put one in the front seat just dead, but in his lap, put the hollowed out skull jack-o-lantern of the other cop with a candle in it that was lit. No, it was, it was the other cop's flashlight. It was a flashlight, mm -hmm. okay. I think, I mean, we were talking in the, in, we were sitting there, first of all, Giggling our asses off. Over See this how movie cool with your was. friends yeah. because holy sh. Uh, but then we were also like debating, like, wait, how much time has passed? Because we saw him, we saw those two cops approaching him, and then the next thing we see is that the dad somehow going the outside. car has driven up. Yes. The the both cops are dead. One is in the front seat. The other guys, like, we were trying to figure out, was his head somehow hollowed out and put in the guy's lap, or did he just cut the face off? And and mount it like, and how much like how quickly does Michael Myers work? Like he is, in like, listen, he's been in a mental hospital for forty years. Doing arts. He and has crafts. like a lot of energy built up. He's the arts and crafts have made him incredibly creative. Like I think he honestly he's to be admired. Humor. He really does. Like and he sets up all these elaborate things. Like even when when the sheriff is going into the house where where Vicky, which by the way, oh. Rip. The babysitter. Vicky. She was great. She was, seemed like a nice person. You know who I did Her boyfriend like, was a shit head. Her shit head boyfriend who dumped a motorcycle. That beautiful bike what on a the ground. Dick. You deserved it. Mm -hmm. uh, but e yeah, even when the sheriff is going in there and and Vicky is sat in the corner with the ghost <laughs> with the a sheet over, his... over her head oh. with the eye holes cut in it, like Michael Myers found a white sheet. Cut Found a pair of scissors. Zip, 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 which is weird to imagine him doing. Propped her there, draped the thing, found a place to hide, and then just waited for the sheriff to come in so that he could do a spooky jump scare. And it's like, Mike, Halloween is a very important <laughs> holiday to Michael. Like, I don't know what to tell you. The I, movie's I literally shit. called Halloween. It's, I don't know what you want. It's super elaborate and it's it's goofy yeah. that he would go to these great lengths just to play grisly pranks on the people he's about to kill, but I f***ing love it. It makes me wish he would have talked to the podcasters because I want to know what's going on in his head. Well, we all want to know what's going on in his head, but if we knew what's going on, like imagine if Michael Myers yeah. talked and was just like, like, yeah, I just think it's funny. <laughs> it, that would suck. I just imagine a Michael Myers TED talk. Where he's, just like, <laughs> he's giving a long diatribe about like, and this is why I killed this person this way. How this is I, why I pulled out everyone's <laughs> tooth and threw them at that British girl in the toilet. How I did it. 
All right, let's talk about some Easter eggs because I'm sure upon multiple viewings, there will be many, many more found, but uh, the ones I noticed or the ones that were pointed out to me at the junket by the director <laughs> and Jamie Lee Curtis herself were amazing. First of all, we see the season of the witch masks from Halloween 3 mm. uh, worn by trick-or-treaters during the <laughs> trick-or-treating scene. Anyone who's seen Season of the Witch knows that those kids are going to have a bad night because <laughs> their faces are going to melt and rot and turn into bugs. So, good luck, kids. Cool. I haven't <laughs> seen that movie. That sounds dope. Though. It's it's great. There's <laughs> robots in this movie. They watch. Oh, is the that first when they were Halloween. trying to make it into like an anthology yes. thing where Season that that movie does not have Michael Myers in it? No, it's it the last one be, John Carpenter was involved in. Right. It was just going to be a series of spooky <laughs> yeah. Halloween movies that. Did, okay. Well. It didn't work. It's a good movie. It's a good movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. oh we're going to watch. Great. Um, there was also, when Michael goes to make his, I think, well, not his first kill, we'll say his fifth or sixth kill, the woman who's making dinner for her family. It's his first kill in this movie. No, oh, no it's not. Because he kills oh the God. podcasters, he kills the other people at the garage, he Jesus. kills a lot of people. Yeah. We don't know how many people he kills on that bus. Oh, <laughs> like Michael, he's a busy man. We, uh, we, so it might even be more than 14 because it, we didn't like, count everybody right. who was on the bus I counted when he escaped. The, I counted the kills we actually Ooh. saw. Holy moly. Which is a lot. Yeah. Um, but when he goes with that, when he goes to, for the hammer kill, mm. he, he kills the one with the hammer, takes the knife she's cutting her ham, her dinner ham with. And then he walks into the living room where there is a baby in a crib crying. <laughs> and there's this horrible moment where you're like, this motherfucker snapped right. a baby, snapped a child's neck. Yeah, we already, we just saw him already murder a kid so that he could steal the car. And, and so you, you're left wondering like, is he gonna kill a right, the baby? Right, uh, he walked in, the baby's crying, he walks in the room and the whole audience goes. <sighs> and then he doesn't, he just yes. walks, he keeps what? going over and goes. No what that audience? That we saw that yeah. in Black Mirror, all right? Yeah, we don't need Crocodile, that Crocodile, I'm good. Oh. F*** you for that. What the audience doesn't know is that crying is actually Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> she, di she did it for us at the junket, and it was fascinating to watch, because she does this whole thing, like, and it sounds like a crying baby. That's crazy. It's that's, nuts. We're, that's like a really clickbaity headline. Like Jamie Lee Curtis has like a like a secret second role in Halloween. So read it on GameSpot.com. Boom. Uh, <laughs> and then the third one that was pointed out to me was uh, back at the bus scene mm -hmm. when the dad and his son come pulling up to the bus. They're listening to the radio, mm -hmm. and the song on the radio is actually a song that was pulled from the first Halloween. When Jamie Lee is walking home, when Lori is walking home, she's humming a made up song to herself that her and John Carpenter made up on the spot. I wish I had you all alone, just the two of us. Because they didn't have rights to another song to Right, use they there. couldn't afford to buy the rights to any song, apparently. So for the new There's movie. public domain stuff. I mean, I still find that story <laughs> weird, but. But now, for the for the new movie, they've actually taken that little song that the two those two people made up and had a band create the actual track and played that on the radio it's so in weird. the car, which is the tiniest, yeah. tiniest weird little thing. But a lot like, of effort that's for a great very small thing for a thing that like five or six people will get. Total. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. It's 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 <laughs> such a it's such a it's bizarre. Pretty, pull. It's pretty. Soft. I mean, I think that people generally know that story about that song that she's singing. It's like one of those things. Like if you look up like you know trivia about the original Halloween, you'll find that out. So I think people are know that song, and so they'll they'll kind of pick up on that if they're big fans. Um, but I, it is. I, like I it didn't, just, and I, that makes me feel like a terrible fan. Because I definitely didn't pick up on it. I didn't I was, very, not, I was very, very shocked. I'm not saying I would have, but it just it's cool that it just shows, like, clearly everybody making this movie was fans, which yes. often isn't enough to make these reboots or, or whatever you want to call that's it. That's true. It's a sequel, but it's kind of a reboot. Too. Right. And that's, being fans is often not enough. I think a lot of people who make this the, these kind of revisiting existing things are fans of the things and are just bad at it. Well, and so I, so they're both, and you know that's why this yeah. one of the reasons this movie works. Well, so and I I well. think a big a big chunk of that is they are fans who know where the line is that you shouldn't cross because so many people, if they were remaking or reviving something that they're fans of, they would lean so heavily on the original in very obvious ways that just feel 
false. Well, I this thought, feels I, like a worthy follow-up mm -hmm. to that first story, I, I not did, just like a, hey guys, remember this character from the first movie? I did think that it leaned, it did lean on the original in in a lot of ways, but I liked most of them. Like, in, right. like the role reversal between mm -hmm. um, Laurie and Michael, like, like <clears throat> there's there's moments where it totally switches and she's the one hunting him. Like she's looking for him throughout most of the movie. Yes. And you can argue there's, I think there's gonna be cases made like just plot wise, whether he is actively on a quest to hunt her down mm -hmm. or if it's just this series of events that brings them, that brings him closer and closer to her as she's hunting him. But there's moments where, you know, she's in the house looking for him mm -hmm. and it's 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 from her perspective and then it goes to his perspective right like when she gets knocked out the window well this is a this is a beautiful moment because in the original halloween that exact scene is reversed where michael gets right. knocked out the window and seemingly killed <laughs> Exactly. And she she looks, looks away down, for a second and he's gone. And he's gone. And when it does that again, like I, I instantly knew when she gets pushed out the window and he looks down and she's lying there, I went, she's mm -hmm. gonna, she's gonna yep. be gone. She's gonna be gone. Cause she's and he the looks away and he she's comes back. the predator. And, right. And she's not on the grass anymore. And everyone in our theater went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was so dope. Oh, so I cool. love all that though. Yeah. That, and that's and that's the good stuff. Yeah. Like taking the themes and taking taking these little moments and dropping them in throughout. You have to be able to know how far is too far, and, and I feel like they walked <clears throat> that line perfectly. And it has to make sense. That didn't. Right. That moment didn't yes. feel out of place. It felt. It didn't feel like too much of like a. Uh, right. It felt like something that naturally happened in the plot. It didn't feel forced or, or shoehorned in. Absolutely. What did you think of the um, the twist with the doctor? I did not see that shit coming. Uh, Laurie calls mm. him the new Loomis, which I found great, just because he's because yeah. he's the new doctor <laughs> taking care of Michael. Uh, no, that was insane. I didn't see that coming at all. I was Me like, neither. what is he doing? Like to understand the killer, I have to become well, the killer. It, it was a logical progression, and the fact that he he made it very clear that he did not want Michael harmed because he wanted to continue studying him. Right. And that made sense and that would have been motivation enough for everything that takes place. But then when he, you know, pops that blade out, I was like, what the sh is happening? Also, why did he have that at the ready? Because he's a like, bad man. Oh, so creepy. It was, and I then was, he put the and, was, and then he put the mask on. I was like, I was shocked, and I didn't like this movie. Didn't need a big twist like that to be, no. you know. And it just was like, just another, so good. And it worked. Yeah, it really worked because that dude, you buy into how crazy he is, and honestly, how crazy studying Michael has made him. Yeah, for forty years. Yeah, never saying a word. No. Um, Chris, did you think that Lori was going to die in this movie? I had a very real fear that Lori was going to die because they, I mean, they introduce her daughter, they introduce her granddaughter. That's two strode women that can sort of carry on the franchise, should it, they so choose. Yeah, and it just feels like, I don't know, do you think Jamie Lee Curtis is gonna wanna return to this role? You know what I mean? Like, right. it just feels like it would be tie a bow on it killing her, she passes the torch to the next generation Han or whatever. Solo. That, yes, it seems yeah. like it would be the, it, it's the expected move. Mm -hmm. Even though, I wasn't sure whether they would, but it seems like it, that's like the safe story choice. What's interesting is they were not allowed to. Uh, Jason Blum told us at the junket that like one of the rules they got from the producer who controls the rights to Halloween was Laurie can't be killed. And I found that to be really interesting because, but also I, I understand why. The last time they killed Lori, it killed the franchise. That's super interesting. It's, so, it's weird to have that kind of a limitation on it, but sometimes I guess working within working within a set of limitations sometimes can force you to be more creative, I guess. At the same time though, after <clears throat> seeing the movie and seeing how on fire Jamie Lee Curtis was in the movie, mm -hmm. I'm really glad they didn't because this was a role she clearly was able to sink her teeth into yeah. and that might want her to be open to revisiting it again. Yeah. One of my one of my favorite moments for her and for Judy Greer mm -hmm. in, in this movie is um, when they're in the basement and they it's the scene where they finally all come face to face with him and they, they uh, he you know he pops up at the top of the stairs 
and Judy Greer is, you know, she's crying, I can't do I can't it, do I'm, it sorry. Mom, I'm if, so sorry. And, and it tricks him into coming out of hiding and she goes, gotcha. Boom. So fucking sick. And then they get him down there and they go, you know, it's not a prison, it's a trap. Chunk. Yeah, when the bars lit came on through, fire. Oh my god, dude. What did she say? This is, she she was like Goodbye, when, Michael. Yeah, oh no, she says happy Halloween, Michael. F and man. then they leave the house as it burns to the damn ground. It's so good, but but he's not there. He's definitely not dead. Come on. It That's cut, the thing. It cuts back to the basement where he was a moment ago. He's not there. He's anymore. not in sight as far as and we can see. It is burning and he's gone. Because listen, how did he get out? I don't know, man. Honestly, they'll probably show it in the next in the five minutes of the next first five part, minutes of the part, next part one. Part of me wants, part of me would have liked this movie to acknowledge, um, like on the one hand, it, it is really fun to have him be this eternal evil that can yeah. not really be like he's not fully he's not really supernatural, but like he's obviously not not he's supernatural. Super tough. Yeah, and and so it's fun to have him just be this force that can never it can only be temporarily you know, right. hindered, but never fully stopped. But part of me also would have enjoyed if this movie had been the one to acknowledge the fact that continuously rebooting, remixing, and redoing this formula is harmful to the to the franchise as a whole. And if they had just put a fucking bullet in his brain, you know? Just like, full stop. They We're not doing it anymore. Do that. That I know, but I think, I just think it would have been cool. On. I think Michael Myers, I think, I, I think Michael Myers, escaping magically at the end, just like he did in the original after being shot X number of times falling out a window, is like maybe the safest thing the movie does. While I would agree, and I agree like that would be cool, for me it would only be cool in the moment. Like the next day when I woke up and I realized like, oh, that's the end of Michael, Michael Myers. Myers is dead. Like I'd be like, oh, well that sucks because I, the thing I love about slasher movies is you can always go back to them. If they were like, we're releasing another Friday the 13th next year, I'd be like, in. We're releasing oh, a new Nightmare on Elm Street next year. <laughs> I mean, the reboot was terrible, but sure, I'm back in. Because I love Because it, be, it might be good again. It might be good again. And, that's and a, there's this history of these movies, you know, a new one comes out and it's a, it's a toss up. You don't know what which version it's going to be, the crappy, the campy, the terrible, or, or you know, the return to form that this movie is. Well, so. and I look at, so I look at slasher films, slasher franchises especially, in a weird way as sort of the American James Bond. James Bond is a franchise that has keeps going, and and they keep bringing in new people as Bond and whatnot. Yeah, and there's no real but, continuity. Th yeah, uh, Halloween, Child's Play, mm -hmm. Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. These are franchises that have been going on since the 70s and 80s that still have audiences that want new installments. They're still making Child's Play movies. I don't watch them. Because Dan does. The, yes, he does. does. Dan Audie definitely watches them. <laughs> uh, but like, I would watch them if they were in theaters, so put them in theaters, please. Sure. But there is life in these franchises, and I'm glad they keep them alive. Yeah. Obviously, we loved Halloween, but we want to know what you thought, so let us know in the comments or find us on Twitter. I'm at Chris Hainer, and he is at Rogue Cheddar. Yeah, we want to know what you thought, unless you didn't like it, in which case, just don't, just yeah. go away. Don't talk to me. Go watch The Nun. Go watch The Predator. You deserve it. Ha, 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 ha.